Hello, welcome to this video. Today, <coughs> we're going to prove this. So, we need to show that for all n that are positive integers, there is an infinite amount of groups, a1, a2, up until a n, uh, such that all of these are positive integers, such that a1, a2 plus a2, a3, all the way on to plus a minus 1, a n, and then it loops back around to plus a n, a1, divides into a1 squared plus a2 squared, all the way on to plus a n squared plus n. So here's how we're going to do this. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, we're going to show if this, if this is true, we're going to show that this divided by this has to be bigger than 1. It's going to be important later on. So basically we're going to show this, this has to be bigger than this. So, let's assume that this is equal to this, that our k that we're multiplying by this number to get this number is, is equal to 1. So meaning that both sides are equal. And now we're going to move this to the other side and multiply by 2, and you'll soon see why. Okay, now uh, we're going to rearrange these to, uh, so that we get a1 squared plus a2 squared minus 2a1a2 plus a2 squared plus a3 squared minus 2a2a3 two plus a3 squared plus a4 squared minus 2a3a4 and so on until at the end we have a n squared plus a1 squared minus 2 a n a1 and these are of the form a squared minus 2 a b plus b squared which is a minus b squared so this is the sum of the terms a1 minus a2 squared but notice this the, a, a square number is bigger than or equal to 0 so this sum is bigger than or equal to 0 but plus 2n it's actually just bigger than 0 and uh, because 2n is just bigger than 0 because n is a positive integer meaning that we get that 0 is bigger than is bigger than or equal to 2n, which is bigger than 0, 0 is bigger than 0, we have ourselves a contradiction. And so this must always be bigger than this. And now let's get on to actually starting the proof, the actual proof of this uh, statement. Okay, so the way that we're going to actually prove the statement is show if we have a solution to this, if there is such a group, then we can always get to a group that one of the terms is bigger. And then, and so we can say the sum of the terms gets bigger, and then we look, and then we can get from there to, uh, by the same, <coughs> by the same argument, we can get to a, an even bigger group, and a bigger group, and so, so on. And so we get an infinite amount of groups. So basically, we need to show that we can replace, say, in, in this argument, a1 with another a1 prime that satisfies these conditions. So let's assume that this divided by this is some number k. So basically, this is this times k. Now, we'll move these to the other side, and we're going to use a clever trick, where we're going to replace, so we're going to assume, first of all, uh, that a1, because it's all, all of this is symmetric, we're going to assume a1 is the smallest, so it's smaller than or equal to a2, and a3, and a4, and so on, until a n. And now we're gonna look at this as a polynomial where a1 is our x. So if we're, and so let's move this to the other side. 
and replace a1 with x, and what we will get is this turns to x squared, and then we want to look like this as a polynomial. So let's look at where our single x terms are, and they only appear here, ka1a2 plus kna1. So when we move these to the other side and group these two together, we get minus kA2 plus an x. And then the rest, is, the rest is the same, plus a2 squared plus, I'll go again to plus an squared plus n, minus the rest of these terms, kA2a3 minus kA3a4 until minus k a minus 1 a n. And now we know uh, that uh, this is equal to 0, and we know that because x is equal to a1 satisfies this equation, because we can just go uh, we could just go back, rearrange, and then divide to get that this divided by this divided by this is k, which is a which we're assuming is a whole number. And so, if we show that the and so so a one is the root of this polynomial, but it's not the only root. If we show there is another root to the polynomial, we can again rearrange and divide to get that this property is satisfied, but instead of a1, there is a different number. And if we show that different number is bigger than a1, well then we've, well then, by, by what I've said earlier, uh, we've solved it. Well, I, we just need to show there is an example, which it will, will see easy to do. So, let's call the second root of this polynomial a1 prime. We know that because a1 and a1 prime are the roots of this polynomial, that means that x minus a1 prime times x minus a1 is equal to this polynomial. And, and so, we get, we get this. Now, and we know this has to be equal to this, and this is equal to this. Now, a1 times a1 prime, we don't actually care about. Uh, we'll see that we can just only use a1 plus a1 prime and the x term, and, and we'll still be able to prove it. And so if these are the same, that means this is equal to this. So a1 plus a1 prime is equal to k a2 plus a n. Now remember, we wanted a1 to be the smallest, and so this is smaller than or equal to, and so this is bigger than or equal to if we replace a2 and a n with a1. So we get 2 a1 k. But remember, we proved that k has to be bigger than 1, and so this is bigger than 2 a1, meaning uh, strictly bigger than 2a1, and so if we move, we move a1 to the other side, we get a1 prime is bigger than a1. And that's it. We've almost proved it. We just need to show a1 prime indeed satisfies all those conditions. So it satisfies these conditions, but it also needs to be a positive integer. But if we look here, a1 plus a1 prime is a positive, uh, a1 is a positive integer, k, we're assuming, is a positive integer, a2 is a positive integer, n is a positive integer, and this is the product of positive integers, a positive integer, minus a positive integer, a1 prime is still a positive integer. And so, we also get that a1 prime is a positive integer, And that me and we've shown that we can, and we could just uh, rearrange this bag, divide, and we and we get that 
And given a1 prime, if replaced with a n, still satisfies these conditions. And therefore, <clears throat> we have almost a proof. Because remember, what I'm saying is, if there exists a solution, we can get to a bigger solution, and a bigger solution, and so on forever. We just need to show there is a starting solution. And that's actually really easy to show if all of these numbers are 1. This is 1 plus 1 plus 1 all the way on to plus 1, which is n terms. So this will turn out to be n. And this will have also n terms of the 1. So this will be n plus n will be 2n. And n does indeed divide 2n, which is the f uh, final argument. So let's write this down a1, a2, until a n is equal to 1, do satisfy this, this condition. And together with this, we can always get to a bigger solution, meaning that we have an infinite amount of solutions. And finally, that's it. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more interesting content and things like this in the future. And finally, that's it.